G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about F equals MA for rigid bodies. So you probably already know that if we've got a particle like this, and we've got a whole bunch of forces acting on our particle, then the net force acting on our particle is going to be equal to the mass of your particle times by your acceleration of your particle. I'm going to assume you already know this formula pretty well. Right, but what you probably don't know so well, I'm guessing, is let's say you've got a rigid body just here, right, with a whole bunch of forces acting on this thing and at random points, right? What formula describes the motion of this rigid body, right? I mean, is it F equals MA? If so, in what context does it work? I mean, how does F equals MA, which is applied to particles, apply for a rigid body? Well, spoiler alert, if we were to sum up all of these external forces acting on our rigid body, right? So the sum of all our forces acting on our rigid body, we can prove that this is equal to the total mass of our rigid body times by your acceleration of your center of mass of your rigid body. And this is the formula which I'm going to derive for you now, okay? Okay, so let me just get rid of all these things just here. There we go, I've gotten rid of all those. Now. There could be an infinite number of particles that make up a rigid body, but I'm going to simplify this case as if there were only three particles that made up this rigid body. A little bit of a simplification, I'm sure, but hopefully you'll appreciate that this can be generalized to n particles, not just three, okay? Now I'm gonna say that there are, let's say, a couple of different forces acting on these particles. Let's say you've got F1 here, and let's say you've got, I don't know, F2 here, and let's say you've got, I don't know, F3 here, okay? So these three particles make up our rigid body, and let's say there are forces acting on our particles, right? In the general case, there's a force acting on each of them, okay? Let's draw a free body diagram of particle one, just here. So this is particle one, let's draw a free body diagram of it. Well, we know there's gonna be one force here, F1, on it. Do we know anything else? Well, for all we know, there could be internal forces on particle one due to particles two and three, right? Especially if this, if this series of particles is rigid, then there will be forces on these particles such that they remain rigid, right? So, for example, you could have a force on particle one due from particle two, and we'll call that lowercase f12. Right? The lowercase f, it's still a force. I'm just using lowercase f to denote an internal force, right? And let's say there's another internal force from particle 3 on particle 1. Well, let's call that F13, right? I hope you get the subscripts here. The, the first one just means on particle 1, and the second one just means caused by particle 3, okay? And, well, fortunately, we already know F equals MA for particles quite well, so let's write that down. For particle one, which is just one of our three particles which make up our assembly, right? We can, we can apply F equals MA. We know that F1 plus F12 plus F13 is going to be equal to your mass of your particle, which is just M1, times by your acceleration of your particle, which I will call A1, right? And you might be thinking, well, pfft, this doesn't bring us any closer to understanding the complicated motion of our rigid body. Rest assured, I'll get to that. We're, we're gonna solve this, I promise you. Okay, so let's draw a rigid, uh, sorry, let's draw a free body diagram for particle two, right? Well, if this is particle two, what are our forces on it? Well, there's gonna be one external force, right? This will be F2, right? But from Newton's third law, there's gonna be an equal and opposite force right here. So notice if, Particle two exerts a force on particle one, then particle one exerts an equal and opposite force on particle two. So you're gonna have a force like this. This is gonna be F21 here, right? And of course, maybe you've got a force from particle three and particle two, so it might look like this, maybe, right? This will be F23, okay? And in fact, we can apply Newton's second law to particle two here, so let's do that. This is particle Two. And if you were to apply it, it's F2 plus F21, that's this one, plus F23. And that's going to be equal to the mass of your particle, M2, times by your acceleration of your particle, A2. 
right? And you're probably jumping the gun already, so let me do it quite quickly. Let's draw the free body diagram for particle three. Well, you're gonna have an equal and opposite force. Let's call that F32. And you're gonna have another force, F31, right here. Now, don't forget your external force here. This is gonna be, I think I drew it roughly like that. This is gonna be F3 right here. And we can apply F equals MA to this particle. And we know that for particle three, it'll look like this. It'll be F3 plus F32 plus F31. And that's gonna be equal to your mass of your third particle, M3, times by A3. And it looks like I've just thrown you down the rabbit hole right now because there it doesn't seem like there's any way to get any sensible equation from this mess, right? Well, this is where we're gonna use simultaneous equations. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sum up all the forces acting on all three particles as purely a mathematical construct. So basically I'm gonna sum up the left-hand side of all of these equations. And this is what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get F1, plus F12 plus F13, right? And then I'm gonna add that to this one and this one, and let me actually shortcut this for you. There we go, I've just written it out. All I've done is I've summed up every single force acting on all of these three particles, right? And what can we tell that this is equal to? Well, just from simultaneous equations, you can tell this must be equal to the sum of the right-hand sides. So this is gonna be M1A1, plus M2A2, plus M3A3. And this is where the magic starts to happen. Let me remind for you what Newton's third law says. It means that if we have one force acting on another particle, that means there's an equal and opposite force acting on the original particle. So in summary, it means that F12 must be equal to negative F21. Right? And in other words, that's the same thing as saying F12 plus F21 is going to be equal to zero. Right? And that's actually really beautiful because that means that this plus this must be equal to zero. So they essentially cancel each other off. Same with this and same with this. Right? So in fact, when you sum all forces together, the internal forces eat each other up and they turn to zero. I think that's really beautiful. Okay, so that's, that's the left-hand side simplified. Can the right-hand side be simplified? Well, to do this, let me just clear this diagram away because we've already explored as much as we can from these forces, right? And let me draw an axis on this thing like this. And let me quickly remind for you what the definition for the center of mass is. Remember, and let me also get rid of this. Let me also get rid of this now. Remember, the center of mass is defined as Rg, and it's equal to, by definition, the sum of Ri, Mi, all divided by the sum of Mi, right? In case you don't know what Ri and, and Rg is, let me just draw it for you. Ri is the position vector to particle one, so, sorry, R1 is the position vector to particle one. R2 is the position vector to particle two. And R3 is just the position vector to particle three. And Rg, by this definition, would be the position vector to some other point. And let's put that point here. This is gonna be point G just here, right? And the beautiful thing about this is, we can actually write this as, well, let's see, the sum of mi will just turn into m1 plus m2 plus m3, which will turn out to be the total mass of your rigid body. So we can write this as m, m standing for your total mass of your rigid body, times by rg is equal to the sum of ri mi. And when we differentiate both sides with respect to time, we get m, times by ag, which is your acceleration of your center of mass, is gonna be equal to a1m plus a2m2 plus a3m3, right? So that's just differentiating both sides and expanding out the summation term here. 
And notice that this term right here is identical to this term just here. So in fact, in summary, and let me write it all down here, f1 plus f2 plus f3, this is your sum of all external forces acting on your entire rigid body, is going to be equal to your total mass of your rigid body times by your acceleration of your center of mass of your body. This is a formal proof, albeit only in the case of three particles, but hopefully you can see that this can be generalized to n particles. This is your proof, guys. I hope that made sense. In summary, the sum of all external forces acting on your rigid body is going to be equal to the total mass of your body times by your acceleration of your center of mass of that body. Whew. Okay, I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.